morning on this absolutely glorious day that the Lord has sent. My name is Jill Dayrosh, and I'm with the First Presbyterian Church of Bayou Blue, and we want to welcome you to our worship service for today. We'll start with today's announcements. Uh, every Sunday morning at nine o'clock, we have a Sunday school, and anyone who would like to attend is absolutely invited to do so. If you are not already on our uh, Zoom Sunday school list, just call Reverend Chris Peterson, and uh, she will hook you up with that. Also, a reminder that um, the church is in need of and still accepting offerings uh, to keep the church running and to keep our activities going. Uh, there are several ways that you can send your offering in. You can um, mail it to our church address, or you can ma mail it to Karen Bland, or you can use the Zelle app and have it uh, directly deposited into the church account. Also, um, we're gearing up once again for Camp Agape, and we are in need of funds to send our children to camp. So if you would like to contribute to our youth fund, uh, please go ahead and make a memo on your check for youth fund. And also on the Zelle app, there is a memo line and if you would like to designate your offering to something in particular, such as the youth group fund, then uh, there's a memo line for you to do that. So I encourage you to please uh, continue to make your offering to the uh, church so that our work can continue. And those are, oh, and I wanted to also reiterate uh, for the Zelle account, Karen Bland's email address where you would send that to. And it's Karen, K-A-R-A-N Bland, B-L-A-N-D, at rocketmail.com. So I encourage you to do that. And those, again, those are the announcements we have for today. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and glorious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come into your presence, our hearts filled with thanksgiving and praise. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of the world that surrounds us. We thank you for technology so that we can worship together. We thank you, Lord, for all of the people, the service personnel, the medical workers, the first responders, all of those out there on the front lines so that we can continue to enjoy the life that we have. We come before you, Lord. We lift up this congregation as we seek to worship you. We lift up the Presbytery of South Louisiana, the Presbyterian Church USA, and indeed all Christian entities in your world, that we could unite under one umbrella, your umbrella, and spread the good news of your world to every corner of your earth. We lift up um, this church as we seek to serve you, Lord. We lift up all of those who are in pain, all of those who are suffering, we ask, Lord, that you would blanket them with your love, that you would give them comfort, that you would give them healing, that you would give them peace, that you would give them assurance that this time in our life will pass and we will come out better on the other side. Lord, as, as we move forward, we ask that you would give us wisdom and discernment, 
that we could make the choices that are best for our health and for the health of our community. We lift that up to you. We bind that, Lord God, in your love. We lift up Reverend Chris as she prepares to deliver your sermon, that you, her words that you have given her would flow into our hearts and we, we would be moved to do your work in your world. Lord, we, we continue to lift up Dolly and Bill. We ask that you would just encompass them in your love, that you could grant healing and peace. We, we just love them so much and, and we want them comforted and restored. As we move forward once again, we ask, Lord, that you would guide our leaders, that they could make wise decisions, that you would guide the researchers, Lord, that a vaccine could be found, and that this COVID-19 would no longer be a threat to us. We lift that up to you. As we stand before you today, we confess, Lord, that we are sinners, and we fall so short. And it's only through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, that we are able to confess our sins with the assurance of forgiveness. So Lord, now in this moment of silence, we come before you confessing our sins and lifting up our individual concerns. Lord God, in all we do and all we say and all we ask, we do that in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God's people say, amen. And go get them. God bless. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Vicki. I'm happy to have for you today two separate Bible readings. I'll be reading from the NSRV Bible and um, if you want to grab your Bible just press pause and come back after. And we first uh, reading from Acts in the New Testament and it would be chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. It says, the promise of the Holy Spirit. In the first book, Theophus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with the water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now the ascension of Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, 
and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Amen. Everyone stay well. Good morning. Uh, so glad to have everybody there with us this morning. I'm Christina Peterson. I'm the pastor at uh, First Presbyterian Church of Bayou Blue, and I welcome you all into the fellowship of the congregation and uh, I hope that you are having a joyful, joyful day. Um, we are thankful for the uh, gifts that Vicki uh, has shared by share, by reading the scripture and Jill by greeting us all in her prayer and the words of welcome. And we are so thankful also for Matthew with his gifts of uh, music that he has recorded for us. And of course, to Corey and Eric that helped put all of this together so that we can have this uh, service for you. And we look forward not only to um, this time together, but also to uh, getting back together in person very soon. So until then, I um, would like to share with you a little bit about the scriptures that you'll be hearing and that you have heard, both from Vicki and that I'll be reading. Uh, today is a very important day in the life of uh, the church. Um, as we have um, celebrated Easter and we will be cel celebrating Pentecost, 
There is the uh, Christian celebration of the Ascension when Jesus went to heaven. And this is that time period. If you will remember last week, we talked about the Holy Spirit and the Spirit being the advocate. Jesus was, was teaching his disciples about what was to come. This week we will be hearing and we've heard um, how the Spirit has continued to move with Jesus telling the uh, disciples to prepare themselves. And then next week, we will be preparing our hearts for Pentecost, which is the birth of the church. So to start um, uh, with, I would like to read a litany for Ascension, and I would like to use this as our offering. Um, as we think about our offering and tithes, it's not just simply something that we do as far as dropping money or uh, into a plate or putting something into an envelope. It's having that awareness that everything we have is from God, everything. All of creation, the breath we breathe, everything. Uh, all of, uh, relationships. The church itself is a gift from God. We are to cherish absolutely everything. And so as Jesus was preparing his disciples and telling them to listen, uh, let us listen to this litany of ascension as we go to the Lord to worship him with our offerings of ourselves in our time, our mind, our imagination, everything that God has given us. Let us turn back to God in adoration and praise and thanksgiving. So let that be our offering this morning. Let us also remember that um, to continue to make our links. And as we make our links, those are going to become longer and longer chains. And so uh, think about the things you're grateful for. Continue to make your links, and we'll link those all around the sanctuary uh, as a way in which to symbolically bind us together since we're still not able to give each other hugs and kisses and all the things that we love to do. So listen to the words of this litany for ascension. Arise, O Lord, in your strength. We will praise you for your glory. Let us praise with and pray with joy to Christ at the right hand of God, saying, you are the king of glory. You have raised the weakness of our flesh. Heal us from our sins and restore us to the full dignity of life. You are the king of glory. May our faith lead us to the Father as we follow the road to the, that you trod. You have promised to draw all people to yourself. Let no one of us to be separated from your body. Grant that by our longing, we may join you in your kingdom where your humanity and ours is, gl is glorified. For you are the king of glory. You are the true God and you will be our judge. So lead us to contemplate, to wait, to listen for your tender mercy. For you are the king of glory. O king of glory, and Lord of hosts, who ascended triumphantly above the heavens, do not abandon us, but send us the promised one, the spirit of truth. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in words of confession. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from the dead, a death to life. You have crowned him the Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have strayed from you. We have done what is wrong. We have not been the people you have taught us to be. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him all the glory. Forgive us and raise us from our sin, that we may be faithful people, 
obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is the head of the church, his body. Amen. Now, as we hear the, before we prepare our hearts to hear the scriptures on the second readings, let us prepare our hearts through prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator spirit, you hovered over the waters at creation's birth. You descended in the form of a dove at Jesus' baptism. You have poured out under the signs of fire and wind at Pentecost. Come to us. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may truly hear the word of life and be renewed by your power. For you live and reign with the Father and the Son, now and forevermore. Amen. Here now the second reading, which is from the first um, chapter of first uh, book of Peter, fourth chapter, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are revealed for the, reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves and keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And now from the Gospel of John, it's from the seventh chapter, verses 1 through 11. Remember, John is the one who is uh, helping us to understand the whole cosmos of Jesus and God and the Spirit. And so let us hear his uh, words that he has for us to understand more fully. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I, I glorify you on earth by finishing the work you have given me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you have given me from this world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you gave me 
because they are yours. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. I changed the order a little bit this morning. Each, each week's a little bit different. Um, but I wanted to read the Apostles' Creed, and you can be reading it or thinking it or saying it in your mind. Because this is something that we say, and I don't know if it catches us in the way in which these scriptures today help push us to understand the ascension. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born on the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be truly acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Last week we talked about the spirit and how the spirit is the advocate for us, the one who is with us, the one that will stay with us, and the one that continues to enlighten us as far as the interpretation of scriptures, the understanding of what to do with our, you know, and, and nudges us with our consciousness and helps us to be better people as uh, followers of Christ. That spirit, if you remember, that spirit was at the very beginning when God created the world. The spirit, Rahu, the breath of God, spread over the oceans, and it separated and is part of creation. So the spirit was there that was breathed out by God that was for all of us. It was the very breath of creation that brought things to life, that came into our bodies, that gives us breath. It is in us and around us. We can't separate ourselves from it. And in John, John starts the whole book of John uh, saying that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Jesus is the Word. So in the beginning, we're told that not only do we have God creating the world, but Jesus is there, and the Spirit is there. How absolutely magnificent. And so the story that we have that goes through the generations of the Old Testament into the New Testament and talks about Jesus's life. Jesus has given us this gift of being God incarnate on earth. Not so that we can just sing sweet songs about Jesus, but that we know how to be with God that we know how to be his people, that we know how to interact with each other. We are his beings that are sinful and wayward if we just go our own way. But Jesus, God in the shape of Jesus, was on earth, is on earth, walks with us, to be able to show us the way. And if we look at his life, then that is the life that we are to lead. We are to walk in his shoes. We are to walk at, uh, the roads he took. We are to do the things he did. 
And so in his last days of life, before his, resurrect, uh, before his death, he taught his disciples, telling them all what was going to happen. And then on the day that he was, he uh, has his, um, uh, he arose <laughs> and the women found the tomb empty. He then became present for 40 days. He became present with his disciples, walking with them on the road to Emmaus, uh, opening their eyes, opening their ears, opening their heart to learn again what all he had taught them before. And he did that in the way in which to prove, to show that it was really true that this Jesus, this man, is not just a man, a mortal, but is the one that is actually embodying God, God in him, him in God. There's no separation. And then in his last teachings, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, that if we do what Jesus has taught us to do, it's risky. He taught us to love our enemies, to go into places that are dangerous, to do things that are beyond what we think are humanly possible. But when he told us that, he wasn't going to let us just, you know, wander blindly. He gave us the spirit as an advocate to be there with us. And so he taught the disciples that, that as they were waiting, remember he said in the, the scripture that Vicki uh, read this morning, it said um, that uh, when he, before he uh, ascended up, that he told the disciples to sit and wait and wait for that spirit to come upon them. Can you imagine, we have been waiting. We've been waiting, a, seems like a long time to get back, as we say, back to our lives. But is it our lives that we're wanting to get back to? Or is it the work of Jesus that we want to get back to? I hear people saying, well, I would need to get back to work. I need to get back to this. I need to get back. I need to go to the store. I need to do this. I need to do that. In this time of waiting, are we bickering about whatever it is that people bicker about? Or are we taking this time as Jesus told us to, as his disciples, to pray to reflect, to become more fully filled with what he has taught us so that when we start that new chapter, as we go forth, we leave that old self behind. We become changed people. That's what it means to die in our baptism that we shed our old self, that we become new, we become reborn in that baptism, a rebirth, a rebirth not of flesh, but a rebirth of spirit. So if we truly believe that, let's leave all those things that society, politics, money, economy, force upon us or want to uh, lure us away from the hatred that dwells in our hearts for some people, the frustration, the whatever it is. Let us become changed people, confessing and getting that out of us so that we can truly take in that Holy Spirit and have that Holy Spirit be an advocate for us as we go into that new phase of life. Next week is we'll be celebrating Pentecost. And that's when the Holy Spirit came down and filled and the church began. It's the birthday of the church. But in preparation for that, this is the week when we as Christians need to heed that uh, word that Jesus gave to us, sit and wait. Fill your hearts with the knowledge 
that Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit, that he will be with us to the end of time, and that we have to fear not. Think again about this amazing story that we have that's our heritage. The Spirit, God, and Jesus from the very beginning of creation. It's a lot to take in. But also we are told in the scripture that he knew our name, that he knows our name. He knows every hair on our head. So all of us, our brothers and sisters, human and non-human, all creation around us, we were made for a certain reason, for a certain role, for a certain time. We need to open our hearts and see what that is. We need to open our imagination and be brave to go to, and have the courage to go and do what he is calling us to do, to walk in his shoes and to walk the road that he taught us. Let us be people of the commandments. Let us be people of the Beatitudes, for that is what he has taught. Anything less, we are degrading God. One of my favorite hymns was written by a man by the name of Jim Manley. He's a, uh, a UCC pastor, and he's in... Um, uh, uh, he's an outdoor ministry person. Jill would love him. He uh, is so energetic and he is just so full of the spirit. And one of the songs that he wrote or the hymns that he wrote, it's in our blue hymn book and it's beautiful, but it, it tells that story like John and it's spirit, sp spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness calling and free, spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from my placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You moved on the waters and you called to the deep. When, then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep. And over the eons, you call to each thing, awake from your slumbers, and arise on your wings. You call from tomorrow. You break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow. The captives dream dreams. Our women see visions. Our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling it free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. Wind, wind on the sea. My prayer for you is that you are courageous people, that you know that what the ways in which you, we together have missed the mark. Let us reconcile. Let us reconcile those, those issues in our personal life, in our corporate life. Let us be the people that Jesus wanted us to be so that when people see us, that is speaking to the world, that we are his people now and forever. Fear not, for he is with you, and the Holy Spirit rests upon you as an advocate. Go now in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Amen. And our hymn that we sing for the congregation is, May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Grant you peace, perfect peace.
courage in every endeavor. Lift up your eyes and see his face. Feel his grace forever. May the Lord, mighty God, bless and keep you forever. Amen. God be with you now and forever. Amen. See you all soon. Love you all. Take care.